Hi, I'm Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about fleas, ticks, lice, and bed bugs, what we affectionately call creepy crawlies. If you've got kids or pets, you are at higher risk. Joining us is family medicine doctor Kristen Benke. She is at Scripps Clinic in San Diego, California. Thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. So you've actually had personal experience with some of these creepy crawlies. Your daughter actually had lice in kindergarten? Sure did. It's every parent's rite of passage. <laughs> she, as with all kindergartners, likes to hug her friends and they touch heads when they're playing under the play structure and on the playground. And we had a little bout of it run through our family. So what are lice? How do you get them and the symptoms and how do you treat them? Sure. So lice, super common, tiny, tiny little insect that likes to live on a host, whether it's an animal or a human. They like to feed on our scalp and, and that's what causes the itching. And uh, they basically cannot jump, so you don't have to worry about them getting onto you from someplace you don't know, but they do like to crawl from one head to the next. The way you know you have them is basically if you have some itching where they are living. And uh, after a couple of days or weeks, if that itching isn't going away, you can have them looked at by a doctor or a close friend, your hairdresser. Uh, but basically, they look like a little sesame seed. And unlike dandruff, they won't really rub off. If you rub the hair, they'll be kind of stuck on. So that's how you'll know what they are. The way you treat them is with a cream rinse, either an over-the-counter brand or a prescription brand. The cost varies based on the newest, greatest you know, uh, brands that are out. Um, and what you have to do is put the cream rinse on, walk around for 10 minutes, and then you want to rinse it off, wash all of the bedding, the clothing, hats and headbands and hairbrushes and such in hot water. And then with clean, wet hair. S sweatshirts too with hoods. Sweatshirts too, anything with a hood, anything that touches the hair. The lice can live for up to two days without a host, but after that they'll die. Um, this is every parent's dream. It's a very, very fine-toothed comb. And on wet hair, you'll sit in the bright light, probably in your kitchen or bathroom, and you'll need to go through very carefully each little um, strand of hair. This is what gets the little eggs off that are so sticky. And you'll collect the nits and the little eggs in here, and then you'll kind of wipe them off with a tissue. And then after that, nine days later, you'll do the cream rinse one more time, and that's what'll kill all of the little eggs that have had a chance to hatch now. What's the difference between head lice and body lice? So body lice are much less common, really typically in areas where there's poor hygiene, communal living, classically homeless uh, or people who are in communal beds. They live on fabric, usually at the seams of the waistband of your pants or of a shirt. They will cause local irritation to the skin, not necessarily itching so much. The treatment is a lot easier. You just wash all that clothing in really hot water, and then the areas under the armpits and along the uh, waistband will clear up all on their own. So you talk about these special rinses for, for your head. What about home remedies such as mayonnaise or olive oil or butter? Do, where do you apply those and do those work? People would apply them to the scalp with the attempt to suff suffocate the little lice uh, insect and asphyxiate it to death. Unfortunately, as natural and holistic as they sound, they just haven't been proven to be effective. So what about fleas? How do you get them? Fleas typically live on animals. Pets, dogs, cats, animals that come in and outdoors, living in nature. They also live on a host animal, but they can jump. And they can jump up to two feet. So if you're going to have any flea bites, you'll see them usually within two feet of the carpet or of a cushion that an animal, maybe your dog, likes to sleep on. And that'll be the extent of it there. And what are the symptoms and how do they spread and what's the treatment? Local irritation of the skin, little red bites, a uh, little itching and scratching. Uh, the treatment would be basically getting that animal treated. They have shampoos and uh, treatments, collars that you can put on your animal. So you would treat your animal and then you'll be cured after that. And what about ticks? Ticks, now they live out in nature also, typically on wild animals like deer and rabbits, and they will be in the shrubs and the, the tall grasses, kind of near hiking trails or even out in your backyard. They uh, will um, transfer by maybe a, a small jump, but mostly just from brushing against the foliage. 
uh, and they will cause a bite. They will typically grab on and bite and hang on for a few hours uh, f feeding on your blood. And then they'll fall off all on their own within a day. So if you didn't notice that you had the tick on you in the initial part, it will fall off all by itself, leaving no trace. Very rarely, uh, it can cause some diseases. You'll see a rash uh, either on your wrists or, or on your body where the tick had been. Um, and so you'll know that you have maybe contracted something from a tick that way. And how do you treat the ticks? The tick. If you see a tick on you, you want to really carefully grab it with some tweezers uh, or come on into the office and we'll do it in, under bright light. Uh, but you want to make sure you grab it at, at the um, neck where it's um, attached onto you. If you were to just grab the body or flick it off, uh, you could leave the head attached. And what, would the head grow another body? No, 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 <laughs> but it wouldn't, you would then have to wait for it to drop off all on its own and it would be expelled. Okay. Yeah. And what about bed bugs? Bed bugs. So we all think about hotels and places where we've gone traveling. Uh, bed bugs typically live in the seams similar to on the edge of your mattress, uh, and they will cause bites usually whatever pot body part was in contact with that mattress. So if you're being really, really attentive, you could strip the bedding off the bed and inspect the mattress. Um, typically, any place that's of, of good quality will have a good quality housekeeping team that will make sure the bed bugs are taken care of. Um, if you do notice that you have uh, bugs in the upholstery of, of your chairs or of your mattress, you pretty much have to buy an exterminator service to come and take care of it that way. There's no way to treat it yourself. Are bed bugs common in people's homes? Less so, no. Normally in uh, homeless shelter type situations or in places where there's a lot of turnover of a lot of people coming through and it's hard to get things clean regularly. Um, hold this thought. We're going to come back and talk about this in a couple of minutes. If you don't catch these creepy crawlies early, um, what can happen? Because they actually can do some real damage to your household. So we'll, we'll come back and talk about that in a few minutes. Are there any other creepy crawlies that you would like to mention? Uh, boy, we could go on and on, spiders <laughs> and all the such. Uh, but these are the ones that most commonly affect families right here in our neighborhood. And all of these bugs, are they more prevalent in southern climates, you know, like California or Florida, where we really don't have a winter? Te definitely, yeah. They do typically spread more during temperate times of the year. If you live in an area where there's cold and snow, they're less common. Here, we, there's no season where we don't have them. But still, we see them more commonly when people are outdoors, spring and summer. And then you talked about over-the-counter treatments and prescription drugs. How long should you consider doing these over-the-counter treatments before you consider a prescription drug to treat these cr creepy crawlies? It's pretty much how much patience you have. How many times do you want to run through the scalp with the little comb that I showed you uh, that's quite tedious? So I know families that will do it two or three times over the course with the nine days in between. Uh, but if the itching comes back each time, that's probably the time to get a prescription strength cream rinse. And for the cost and the hassle, it does give you some peace of mind. Uh, when we had this run through our family, we went straight to a prescription, and uh, it was really nice because the one that we used uh, was called Sclice, and it kills the knit as well as the lice. So you don't have to go back nine days later and do another treatment. You don't have to be so diligent about making sure you got every last egg off of every last hair. And, and we want to make an appeal to parents because they are sometimes reluctant to come forward and talk about this because they feel ashamed about having these parasites in the home and the bed on the kids. Sure. And, and you're saying that they shouldn't feel ashamed. Not at all. Everyone's been there, I promise you. And what we really just want to do is get rid of the itching. So there's no person of any socioeconomic status or living situation that isn't at risk for these little guys. And we just treat them when they happen. And as much as we love our pets, um, they obviously can bring insects and ticks and fleas into the homes. So how do you keep them clean and check them for these external parasites? Yeah, um, well, certainly if you have a cat or a dog that comes in and out all the time, you're gonna be seeing your vet regularly doing some sort of couple times a year flea treatment. Um, you'll notice if your own pet themselves is itching and scratching and you'll get them treated by the vet. From ticks, this is actually a really good point. When you go out hiking and having fun, come back in. If you shower uh, within about two hours, uh, rinse your clothes off in really hot water. Um, that'll help to kill any tick uh, that might have hitched a ride on your clothes. 
Do these creepy crawlies cause um, any serious illnesses or is it just a lot of scratching? Typically when it's lice or flea bites or bed bugs, no, there's no serious illness in there. It's just the, the itching of the skin and the irritation of the skin. With ticks, there are two diseases that can come. One's called Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and the other one is Lyme disease, which everyone's heard of. Um, they're both very easy to detect. They both cause similar type symptoms. Malaise, fever, body aches, uh, a rash. Um, the classic Lyme disease rash is called the erythema migrans and it's a target like lat rash. It's red in the center with a little clearing and then another red ring around the outside. The Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever typically will have a rash on the wrists or the ankles and then that'll progress to a rash on the palms and soles. Docs and, and any practitioner could pick them up pretty easily and they're both easily treated with a course of antibiotics, typically doxycycline. What should you tell your children about these creepy crawlies? Because obviously you want to protect them but you don't want to scare them. Sure, and believe me, when my daughter found out that she had them, she was mortified. And so, no, we just say, um, you know, from then on, and, and I'd even been told by another friend of mine with kids older, uh, we just pull her hair back when she goes to school every day. We pull it back into a ponytail, and that does wonders. You're not going to keep them from hugging and playing with their friends and touching heads. Uh, so I just told her, yeah, you had a little bug. We killed it off. Nothing to worry about there. And uh, we just pull her hair back into a little braid or a ponytail every day for school. So you talk about kind of cleaning out the seams mm -hmm. of your furniture and your bed. Are there other steps you can take to protect yourself and your home and your backyards sure. from getting these creepy crawlies? Yeah, ideally you would keep a lot of the shrubbery and foliage kind of pulled back and, and neatly uh, uh, maintained um, just to minimize, you know, when you're out playing frisbee and kicking ball in the backyard, you're not going to be running into a bunch of tall grasses and shrubs like that. The dogs are going to get under the bushes, that's fine. Um, basically just normal hygiene. You can inspect yourself if you really are afraid of ticks or you live in a, a, a wooded area. Um, you can inspect the seams of your clothes, wash your outdoor clothes fairly frequently. Um, so we referenced this a couple of minutes ago. Let's come back and talk about this. If you don't catch these creepy crawlies early, what can happen? Because they actually can do some major damage to your household. Right. It's just uh, you'd have to set off maybe some flea bombs in your house or some bed bugs, uh, the cost of hiring a service to come in and uh, clean out your house from all of these little bugs that like to live deep in the cushions of your bedding and of your your, um, your pillows. You, there's no way anyone's going to go buy new pillows every month. Uh, you are going to have things like that and, and certainly little dust mites that live in the stuffing of your mattresses and such. Just um, cleaning off everything in hot water and, and keeping track. Um, yeah, if you do feel like you've got a bug bite or, or an itchy scalp, come on in, show it to us and we'll help put your mind at ease. Talk a little bit more about dust mites because we didn't address those early on. Right, yeah. So pretty much every pillow, every mattress, every cushion is going to have some dust mites in them after a period of time. These are all animals that live in nature and we live and coexist with nature. Uh, so we basically would do a, uh, a, a, if someone's having an allergy to dust mites, stuffy nose, runny nose, waking up in the morning with a sore throat, I would might maybe advise them to try going out and buying a hypoallergenic cover that goes over your pillow or over your mattress. They're a little bit stiff and crinkly, but they create a little extra barrier between you and the little buggies. So that might help to uh, improve sore throat, stuffy nose upon wakening in the morning only. And how often should you wash your sheets and pillows to get rid of the dust mites? Uh, sheets and pillowcases, probably every one to two weeks. Any final thoughts, doctor? Uh, we live and exist with nature. We enjoy living in San Diego and we're gonna be exposed to all these little guys. And just by you know being aware, you'll be, able, you'll be safe. Thanks so much for being with us. Oh, it was my pleasure. We appreciate it. Thank you. If you'd like more information on creepy crawlies, please click on the link or go to scripts.org forward slash videos. Want more critical information about your health? Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks so much for joining us. It's our mission at Scripps to help you heal, enhance, even save your life.